For the past six months, my family and I have been living with this, the Skoda Octavia RS wagon. And in this review, I'm gonna tell you what it's been like to live with, some of the good stuff and some of the bad stuff too. So stay tuned. Come on. This video is going to be split into sections to make it easier to navigate. You'll see the time codes on your screen now if you want to jump ahead to something that interests you most, or if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see chapter markers in the timeline below. In this review, I'm going to tell you a bunch of the findings I've come across during my six months with this Skoda Octavia RS wagon. And before you go jumping down into the comments asking what that black box is on top, it's a luggage pod or storage pod. I got it fitted because I wasn't sure whether this size of wagon was actually going to be right for me and my family, which is two dogs and a six month old plus my partner. And I was right. I did need that storage at certain times during my months with the car. Now let's go over some of the other practicality considerations when it comes to the go to Octavia Wagon. The reason you buy a wagon over a sedan or SUV is the perception of an added level of practicality. Or you might just like the look. I fall into both camps and having had a baby earlier this year, I figured that the Skoda sports wagon would be the perfect fit for our family. But I also knew that my two stinky dogs would be accompanying us on trips away. Their bedding and all the stuff we usually take with us combined with the on the road nappy changes made me think a rooftop pod would be great for us. Good thinking because considering the boot at 640 litres, which is bigger than most SUVs out there, well it gets full pretty quick when you load in a pram, a bassinet, a porticot, suitcases and all the other stuff. If you're a parent of a newborn or young children, you might want to consider if you are weighing up whether to go SUV or wagon, that with a wagon, you've got a really low load lip and a really low boot height. So if you need to do an on the road nappy change, which I've done a few times in this car, you do sort of have to bend right over. I mean, I'm a little bit taller than average, but even for a shorter person, it might hurt your back. Just keep that in mind. And also there's a good thing, the load height is quite low. So lifting heavy items is pretty easy to get over that lip but it is quite a steep lip as well and there's no false floor for the boot either. But I did love the hooks and cubbies on the sides of the boot area, good for keeping essentials like your reusable shopping bags, add-ons for the pram and even the netting and the picnic mat that you get as part of the Skoda as well. And I really, really appreciated that double-sided floor mat in the back too, great for cleaning up spills. The boot was definitely practical enough for the trips we did. Unfortunately, the pandemic ruined a few plans for drives to see family and friends earlier on during our loan, but it was good when we needed it to be. Now let's check out the backseat practicality. For adults, the backseat space in the Octavia is pretty damn good, I've got to say. This seat's set for me at 182 centimetres or six foot tall. That's my memory seat setting, which is a nice thing to have. Uh, and I have enough knee room to sit comfortably behind, but there's enough foot room and just enough headroom too. With this panoramic sunroof, which is an optional extra on this grade, it's gonna cost you about two grand to have it as well. It does eat into the space just a little bit. So if you have a taller family, maybe check it before you tick that box. Now, in terms of space with a child seat in here, um, it is pretty limited for that person up the front. I'll get to that in a sec, but we managed to fit this rearward facing child seat pretty easily. Uh, there is basically a bit of padding here to hold it in place and make sure that it sits in a nice stable position. And yeah, it is mostly a pretty good option for someone who is having a child seat like this fitted to their car, but I think it's gonna be a much better option for someone who has a forward facing child seat because you're gonna have a little bit more room to play with as well. Now, if you have youngsters that maybe aren't in child seats or you ferry around other occupants all the time, then they're gonna be happy with the fact that they've got map pockets. There are door pockets with lining as well. There's a flip down armrest with cup holders. And of course you've got that sunroof too. Plus in this spec, you get rear seat temperature control, uh, which is a nice thing to have, and rear seat heating, but that's only because this car has the optional pack that gets you that. You do get vents in every single Octavia wagon, plus in every Octavia wagon, you will get this clever little sun blind, which does help block out the sun enough for most trips, but in the warmer months, we've found that we've been wanting a little bit more protection on the side window for our little one in the back for those longer, warmer trips. That's the back seat. Should we check out the front? 
So the front seat space in the Octavia RS is quite good and there's lots of storage available to you. Although these cup holders are a little bit small and if you try and fit a bottle in there, you might struggle. Now I've got quite a large bottle that I've been taking with me. It fits nicely in the door pocket, which is good. Those door pockets are lined as well, which just means that things won't rattle around quite as much. There's also a little bin in this side door and you also get the trademark Skoda umbrella tucked into the door as well. Those are those simply clever touches that the brand always talks about. Now let's talk about some of the other touches in this cabin. The gear selector is something that you will have to get used to. Uh, it is just a toggle switch thing. And for most people who see it for the first time, they don't know what it is, but it's a pretty basic shifter and it shifts quickly, which is good. There's also a park button above as well. Ahead of that, you've got a wireless phone charger and two USB-C ports. Now I don't have a USB-C adapter because it's in use up here up on top of the rear vision mirror, which is plugged into my little dash cam that I've got running. I always have a dash cam in my long-term cars just to be safe. And it's good to have USB connectivity up there as well. The seats are mostly very comfortable. They offer decent adjustment as well. I like the design of the trim, but they are quite bulky. And that means that you miss out on a little bit of space that you might get in a lower grade version of the Octavia, especially if you've got a rearward facing child capsule in the back. As you can see, this space isn't huge. And when I've sat in the passenger seat, I've been really uncomfortable. In fact, my knees were pretty much hard up against the glove box, which isn't very comfortable especially for longer trips. My partner's a little shorter and she was mostly comfortable, but after about three hours in the car, you do start to get a bit fatigued because you are a bit cramped up. That's surprising for a car of this size for basically a family car. It just isn't quite as spacious as I thought it was going to be. And over the time we've been on our longer trips, that has been a bit of a bugbear. Speaking of bugbears, this screen has been a real issue for me. That's because the wireless Apple CarPlay seemingly is very unstable with my phone in particular. And I've really had issues with it just disconnecting randomly, especially though, while the phone is on wireless charge, which is a bit of a weird one. And also it's really annoying when you're using the maps on your phone to navigate somewhere that you've never been before. And then the screen just decides that it's gonna turn off. And if you're somewhere you've never been before, it means you might have to pull over on the side of the road and try and wait for things to figure themselves out or use the inbuilt navigation system in here, which I've found isn't as good as it could be either. So that connectivity part of the equation isn't nearly as good as it could be. And that might be something you wanna factor into your purchase decision. But I do like the fact that the screen is wide. And even though you do have to control the temperature controls through the screen, there's at least a little home bar at the bottom to make it a little bit easier for you. You do learn that there are quick shortcuts to get between screens. So you've got a climber button. Climber is short for climate for some reason. Uh, and you've also got a little pull down tab at the top with some favorites for your air recirculation, for example. Uh, and I've liked that heated front seats too, which came in handy when it was a bit cooler in the mornings. And I've loved that there's a digital dash display as well. Head up display too. So you've got a lot of those digital elements that you might want. I just wish they worked a little bit better. Octavia prices have gone up since I've been this car's custodian. When I got it, the MSRP was $49,090, and now it's $49,590, and there are national driveway prices, and they've gone up too since this car launched. This one, though, has the RS Premium Pack, so that's an extra $6,500. The red paint is $1,100, and the sunroof is nearly two grand. So all told, we're talking about a $60,000 Skoda wagon here. And to me, that feels just a bit pricey. And I'm not saying that because, you know, there's a range of different sporty wagons at cheaper price points that are out there. There aren't that many. I mean, there's the new WRX Sport Wagon, which is coming and it'll likely be a bit cheaper, but it's more because I think that for a lot of people, a lower spec Octavia wagon might actually tick all the boxes that are required. In fact, if I was shopping for an Octavia wagon, I don't think I'd be buying an RX which is saying something. But if you are buying an RS, you wanna know all about what's under the bonnet. And that's what separates this car from the lower grades. So let's check it out. 
if you're like me, you'll think to yourself, it's totally worth the extra money to get the RS's punchy two liter four cylinder engine with its 180 kilowatts and 370 Newton meters of torque because it's the beast of the range. But if you're also like me, you'll realize that you're never gonna really gonna be able to exploit the potential of this engine due to Australia's strict speed limits and also the fact that you're not gonna drive like a Ning Nong when you've got your family in the car. But it is a really punchy unit and it's got a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission or DSG as the group calls it and it's front wheel drive. Now, speaking of drive, Shall we do it? So driving, that's one of the big selling points of the Octavia RS over the other versions of the Octavia. Obviously, it's the sporty version and you can exploit that engine when you need to, but in most situations, you're gonna be finding yourself tootling along at the speed limit like I am. And I've found that quite a bit of a frustration because you know as a new parent you don't get as much time to go on those fun drives just for the sake of it and maybe you don't have kids or maybe your kids are a bit older and they're happy to come along for a drive like that but in that situation when you do just want to have a bit more fun uh, you have to find the right moment and I've guessed that maybe I'm learning that that's more about me than it is about the car but the Skoda has been really, really nice to live with. And part of that comes down to the fact that there are drive modes that you can choose to basically tailor the experience to what you need at that moment. And I've found that I've used the drive modes in this car more than I have in any other car before it. And that's because at the touch of a button, you get the choice of eco comfort, normal sport and individual. And the individual mode is the one that I have found myself gravitating towards most because in individual you can actually choose how firm or soft you'd like the suspension dampers to be and that just makes basically fine-tuning the ride level of comfort slash control that you want just a bit easier because you put it in sport mode it's a bit too firm and wooden feeling put it in comfort mode it might be a bit too squishy feeling although from every passenger who I've had in the car who can talk <laughs> they've said to me that uh, the backseat experience is really really comfortable and I think that's an important factor for family car buyers but it is an RS model so if you do want to hit sport and you want to hear that fake engine noise coming into the cabin you want things to be firmer and sharper and more aggressive and you want to be able to do that 0 to 100 sprint in 6.7 seconds according to Skoda well you can do all that and that's the great thing about it is that it is a multifaceted vehicle it does have different personalities depending on what you want when you want it for me and my family doing the long distance road trips that we've done a couple of it's been a really nice country road tourer and freeway hauler as well my biggest complaint about the freeway driving is that at 110 k's an hour you get way too much road noise coming into the cabin and it can be quite annoying and that's on normal surface roads and when you get on coarse chip roads it's even worse on the day-to-day -day driving front, I did have a couple of issues with the reverse camera in this car, just blacking out and not showing any image from behind. The vision from the driver's seat isn't too bad, but you always want that extra safety barrier that you get with a camera just to see what is directly behind you. So that was really annoying to have that sort of muck up during my time with the car. When it comes to safety systems, I had a bunch of fails with this car's safety systems, just the software just wasn't up to date and some of the systems weren't working at times, which was, again, really annoying when you're spending this much money on a car, you'd expect that things should work, especially when it's less than six months old. One thing I did like about this safety systems in this car is that the lane keep assist is easy to turn off. A lot of modern cars make it pretty difficult to disable that tech and for good reason. But I personally don't like lane assist a lot of the time. This one is pretty good, but I have found myself turning it off most of the time. And it's really simple. It's just three quick presses on the steering wheel and it's off. All in all then, my time with the Octavia RS has been a good one when it comes to driving, but I just wish that some of those little tech gremlins didn't pop their head up.
On your screen now, you'll see the official combined cycle fuel consumption figure for the Skoda Octavia RS wagon, and that's what you theoretically should be able to achieve across a mix of driving. Now, here's what I've seen over my time with this car across a mix of driving, mostly going up and down the Blue Mountains, a bit of highway driving to friends and family, and also a lot of urban stuff just to go to the shops and whatnot like that. Some things to consider. It requires 95 Ron premium unleaded petrol, and if you've seen a petrol station in the recent couple of months and you will realize that that's very expensive. We're talking about 80 bucks to fill it and you're gonna get about 600 to 650 kilometers per tank. Now, how neat is this? Skoda includes a little ice scraper. If you live in a cold area, that's pretty handy. And in here is where you'll also find the tire pressure placard for what you need to be running your tires at, which is pretty neat. The safety story is a pretty good one across the entire Octavia range, but in the RS you get everything that you can possibly get in this particular model. So, here's a rundown. Standard is AEB with pedestrian and cyclist detection, lane keeping assist with lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, auto high beam lights, driver fatigue monitoring, and 10 airbags. The Octavia range has a five star ANCAP rating from 2019. You might have noticed that in every single review we do on the Cars Guide site that there is an ownership portion of that review. But it's very rare that we get the opportunity to actually talk about what it's like to own a new car. And in the instance of my Skoda Octavia RS experience, well, I got to learn what it was like to be a real customer because, well, I had a few problems with it. The problem was that the safety systems were disabling at times and the reverse camera kept blacking out. Along with the media screen, the local Skoda dealership came and collected the car and left me a loan car. They took it to their workshop and updated the software, brought it back the next day, and it's been mostly good ever since. Mostly, yeah, but I'm still having heaps of issues with the wireless Apple CarPlay. It's really, really unstable and really frustrating, to be frank, considering the price of this car. You'd think they would have been able to invest the money into getting it right, but they seemingly haven't. At least all the safety systems are still working right. Thankfully, those fixes were done under the Skoda warranty, which is five years or unlimited kilometers. And they didn't cost me a thing, obviously, apart from a bit of time. But if you are considering buying a Skoda, make sure that you check out the service packs because the prices of those actually represent huge discounts over pay-as-you-go pricing for your servicing. If you're wondering about servicing intervals, they're 12 months or 15,000 kilometers. This car's been really good for all the reasons you'd expect. It's fun to drive, it's practical, it's got lots of tech and lots of equipment, and it fit into our lifestyle really well. With a six month old now and two small dogs, this size of car is just about right, including that roof pod though. Now, there are some issues though. I found that the tech issues, the complaints about the software, the safety systems failing, and also that constant bugbear of the Apple CarPlay just not staying stable would really factor into my purchase considerations if I was looking into buying one. Let us know if it'd factor into yours by hitting us up in the comments section below. All that considered, this is not a bad family wagon. In fact, I really enjoyed my time with it. You can read all about my six months with this Skoda Octavia by going to the Cars Guide site and reading my detailed review. You'll find the link in the description below if you're watching on YouTube. And as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hit that bell icon to keep up to date with all of our latest videos. Thank you for watching.